Hi, this is Scott Harden, AJ4VD, and I am going to demonstrate how to assemble a lot of small image captures of QRSS signals into a single large image using the QRSS Stitcher software that I wrote. This is a folder of Argo captures. Argo is a popular QRSS capturing program, and every time a screen of data goes by, it saves the capture in a file like this. And it's convenient because it saves all of the data but it's not the easiest way to determine what is being said. For example, if I want to determine what call sign this is, the only way to do it is to click forward and back a lot of times and try to determine what it is. And once again, it's possible, but it's very difficult. So my software makes it easier. All you need to do is have all of your capture files in one folder. They can be bitmap files, JPEG files, any image file should be okay. And open the VD Stitcher program the QRSS stitcher that I wrote and select the first capture of the series. So I go to the desktop and select the first one. Open. Now it loads that capture into this cropped image example screen. What I want to do is isolate the data and remove the frame. So I can do that by clicking these values here and as I raise the first X value you can see it getting narrower right here. I'll raise it up pixel by pixel until it, the edge of the data is right up against the pink. And I chose pink because it gives strong contrast to a lot of other colors. I'll do the same thing for the right side. Oops, a little too much. And notice there's a black line here. I want to make sure that I remove the black line. And then I can do the same thing for the top and the bottom. You don't have to be perfect because the top and the bottom really don't matter as much but I'm going to include the red marks just to keep it interesting. So now this is our new cropped image. This is what it's going to look like. Uh, I can click this button to hide the preview. We don't need to look at it anymore. Or I can show it. It doesn't matter. Now if I save each cropped image, you can turn that on or off by clicking this, it will turn every image into a crop like this and save it individually. Alternatively, if you have this unchecked, and this unchecked as well, if I were to click Stitch, it would just create a single image of all of these cropped images assembled together horizontally. If I save each cropped image, it saves every of each one of these cropped images and the horizontal image. And finally, I can save a squished image. Now, the final image, if this is 600 pixels wide, assembling 10 of them will make an image 600 pixels wide, or a 6,000 pixels wide. <laughs> That's not the easiest file format to work with. I can squish it by a factor of 10 or maybe a factor of 5 in the horizontal direction so that when I uh, create a new image it's a lot easier to look at. But it will still create the original large image as well. All of our settings are ready to go so I'll click stitch and when I do you can see this status line here will change showing me what the program is doing and it's done. When it's done it pops open the new folder of files that it created. You can see those here. This is the desktop. This is the Argo folder and this is the new folder that it created. It's called Stitched. In that folder you can see all of the individual cropped image files. I can open them up and cycle through them one by one. And you can see the uh, squished stitched file. This is where it's been decreased horizontally by a factor of five. And you can see it's a, a little bit easier to look at. And this is the original scale with the images stitched together. And this is a very convenient way to look at it. So there you go. I hope that you will find the QRSS stitcher convenient. Oh, one more convenient thing is that these X and Y values, if you're using Argo, they're always going to be the same. So if you close the program and open the program again, oh, sometimes it creates an error when it closes. I'll fix that later. <laughs> when I open the program again, it loads the same values that we had before. So if I open an Argo capture again, it knows to stitch it for Argo. So I never have to adjust those values again unless I use a different imaging capturing program for my QRS signals. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. My email address is swharden.gmail.com. 
The easiest way to contact me is through my website, swharden.com. Here, if you click on Cure SSVD or some of the other menu items, which might show up shortly, you'll be able to find the most recent uh, versions of the software. Also note that this software checks if it's the most recent version every time it closes, and if there's an update available, it'll alert you in a pop-up window when you close the program. And that's not the pop-up window I was referring to. So, all right, good luck.